Good morning, everyone. Unfortunately, <laughs> in my head, I have a lot I want to talk about, and you can kind of see most of it here on the table. <laughs> but something else I wanted to talk about that kind of brought what brought brought to my attention this morning: um, Las Lajas Red Honey Costa Rica naturally processed coffee, uh, notes of strawberry, orange, peach, green apple. It's really interesting how much of an actual strawberry smell you get from these beans. It's there. It's a beautiful smell. Um, it is from Costa Rica. I think I've linked the video showing the, the process before this farm in particular, uh, seems really cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our AeroPress today, which I think is going to call for around maybe 18 grams of coffee. Yeah, well, okay, we'll do 19 and call it even. Actually, we'll call it even even 19. Certainly. I watched duck soup the other day, or the other week. Chico had very big hands. So 19 grams, we're going in. And this is the AeroPress. So we'll put it down to about a medium, medium setting and we'll grind. All right. I didn't spray them. I totally forgot, but um, God, the strawberry smell is so pr uh, pronounced. It's really neat. It's almost like a strawberry jam smell. Interestingly enough, like uh, this was a January roast. It seems to have like matured in an interesting way. And that might just be because it's a red honey process, which means that they take all of the, the skin away from the coffee bean fruit and let it sun dry for weeks uh, in the sun, strangely enough, and rake it just so all of the beans get evenly, you know, dry roasted basically from the, from the sun. And then they uh, wash them I dry them and then make coffee out of them. And it just makes this amazing uh, flavor. Okay, so this, I only measure the beans. I don't measure the water because I fill this thing up as, hard, as far as it'll go. We're not gonna do an inverted method today. We're just gonna do a good old normal kind of pour. So we're pretty much done with that. I am gonna have it sit for a little bit, maybe about four minutes and then we'll push through. So I'll put the stopper on quickly and, and stop the, the water flow process because it pr flows pretty freely. Got a little time. It flows pretty freely through this, this paper filter. I love this device. I'm, it was the first coffee thing I ever bought. I love using it. It's just one of those uh, weird little niche things that, um, that it does so much with, you know, very little. So, so anyway, um, this morning and everything on threads, I mean, in the beginning it wasn't that much better, but it didn't seem like it was that pronounced everything on threads right now, which is a social media website, uh, just like Twitter. Uh, it's, it's now reactionary and people post five post stories. Um, and no matter how nice and kind and wonderful the story is, there's always at least one person that jumps in there and just shits the bed on everything. And it's just, it's just gotten to the point where you are expecting it whenever you open something that's nice and wholesome or something that should be very, should be a layup that should be just easily understood, you know? And, and I'm pretty sure that the text message that the screenshot was taken from didn't happen. It, it was faked. I'm more than sure. Um, I think it was posted without comment, but it just reminded me of corporate and how corporate does not care. And a lot of the responses from people who are in corporate showed me that corporate stuff does not care. It was a short little text message between a manager and a employee who obviously was a part-time employee who probably worked in fast food. Maybe it wasn't like a chain McDonald's, but it was definitely someplace, you know, where that had like a lunch rush hour. The boss message saying you were supposed to be in here at 11, 
uh, why aren't you here? And then she messages back saying, my grandmother died this morning. I'm very sorry, I've, I've been dealing with that. And she says, well, the next time, let us know. That's not it, you know? That's not it. I, I, I don't think it, I mean, it doesn't really matter what, what the job is. That's not it. Um, let me pour this in here. Get everything a little bit disturbed here. I'll let it pass through a little bit, I guess, and I'm gonna stir up the coffee bed a little bit with a spoon. And then I'll add a little bit more water. And then we'll close up the top. And then we'll let it, we'll let it go. So let's get this bed disturbed just a little bit. There we go. I mean, the, the pouring should have disturbed the bed enough but I'm just giving it a gentle stir just so I can make sure. And then we'll fill this the rest of the way up. It's gonna drain just a little bit. We're gonna put the plunger down in a little bit and we'll pull back just a hair to give it some suction. So now the coffee is gonna stay in there for the most part, there still be a little dribbles, but there should be enough suction there to allow for the coffee to stay and to basically uh, steep. So perfect. And I will start a timer. We'll do about five minutes and we'll see how I feel. So, and then, you know, the reaction from the supervisor was no empathy whatsoever. And that we should focus on contacting the business and letting them know uh, my parent died, no matter what emotional state you're in, uh, you know, my family member died and somebody I was probably very close to. And so you should have contacted us to let us know that you would not be in. It wasn't an illness. Now, if it was an illness, that would make sense. Contact us, let us, but this was an emotional moment. This was family focused. It wasn't about an individual issue. It was about a larger problem, i.e. A, grand, a grandparent passing away. And you know, you don't know what kind of a relationship. It obviously hit them hard enough to where they were physically and mentally unable to come in and call off. So, so the, I mean, the right thing to do there and you know, everybody there, and again, they're gonna be detractors. They're gonna be horrible people and you are horrible people who will say she should have dropped everything, pulled herself up by her bootstraps and called in and let that place know who was gracious enough to allow her to have a job that she was not gonna be in because a family member passed away. And you are wrong. In the case of an 18 year old individual who you don't know the situation between the grandparent and that child, the only thing you can do if you wish to retain that person is to have empathy and say, I'm sorry, let us know when you can come back. I mean, that's it. I mean, because at the end of the conversation, after that person, after that supervisor said, well, you need to let us know next time, the next text message from that employee was, who do I speak to in order to turn in my two weeks notice? That's a problem. And that's a problem that managers need to understand depending on where they work and who works for them. They need to understand that turnover is a thing, you know? And I mean, if you work in fast food, you know turnover is a thing, but not have, I mean, being so terrible in misunderstanding and lacking any empathy that, you know, after someone says, my grandmother passed away, the next words out of your mouth are, well, next time you need to call us. That's not it. In my opinion, the manager acted inappropriately and it cost her a potentially good long-term employee. And maybe at a certain point they had another conversation. I don't know. I only got that bit of information. So, I mean, it's basically one of those things where you have to infer everything prior to that interaction. If they wish to retain that employee, they need to establish, even if it's fake, some kind of empathy to let them know, hey, okay, it's fine. You're gonna be okay. Everything's okay. 
let us know when you can come back. Not, next time it happens, you need to let us know. It's not an illness. They're not sick. Or they can call in and say, I'm sick, I can't come in. This is an event that an 18-year-old has just experienced. And you know, I'm guessing that it's an 18-year-old and I'm guessing that it was a part-time job. But since they were supposed to come in at 11 o'clock, the supervisor was speaking to them in such a manner that it was scolding rather than empathic. It was a part-time job where the, the supervisor expects some monicum of turnover and that was, you know, that was their answer to grandma dying. It's awful. And it just, and the responses were just insane. The person who lost their grandmother, she's a brat and she has no response. She, she doesn't feel responsible for her work. No, she's tallying up lunch orders at a computer and then watching you install another computer to where they can do it automatically themselves. Okay, so we've gone for seven and a half minutes. I'm sorry about that. It just, it, I read that this morning and it bothered me. Some of those responses, and I've been a manager. Every time something has happened, I have been willing to step up and do what needed to be done in order to fill up that position that was lost for that day because something terrible happened. And you have to be empathic. You have to be understanding. All right, it's just, it's just weird. So, okay, so time has passed. I'm gonna push the plunger down. No whammies, no whammies. And you don't have to push, you don't, really, you don't have to push. You just use gentle, even pressure from your hand I mean, just the weight of your hand may be enough to push it down. I didn't put a little coffee in there. It's not a very dark coffee. It's a medium roast. It's not gonna be a very dark coffee anyway. And there we go. How much coffee is in there, I wonder? I should, probably should have weighed it. Yeah, it's all right. Mm. Still has that uh, nice strawberry smell. Mm. It tastes, has a nice little taste of strawberry. This might be a little weaker than I hoped for and anticipated. I mean, it still tastes really nice. It's a lot better than, uh, <laughs> a lot better than muddy water, I guess. <laughs> but the, the Costa Rica, the Las Lajas uh, red honey is just absolutely delicious. And um, yeah, this does um, this come off a little weak. I probably should have measured everything and gotten a recipe for the AeroPress. But, you know, I felt 19 grams of coffee for that smaller uh, device. You know, I thought that made sense. But then again, I have been doing, what, 30, 35 grams of coffee, 500 grams of water. So, but it's okay. It's all right. It still tastes really good. Mm. So all of this other stuff, <laughs> after I went off on my tangent, I'm sorry about that. So I guess I really like Stitch now. I bought a cape from a Japanese focused, like trinket store, basically. A lot of trinkets from ja Japan and whatnot. And my mother found a kit for Stitch. Isn't that just adorable? Those ears are huge and they're just so cute. So she, she crochets anyway. She's made blankets and shirts and coats and my Starfleet uniform that I have downstairs on a mannequin. She created that out of fabric and a pattern that I sent her, you know, so she's, she's a seamstress. So Stitch and the little doll. This is Scrum. <gasps> I made her, but her head is too big. So I pretend to bug laid eggs in her ears and she's upset because she only has a few more days to... I stopped by my friend's house. He bought a 3D printer. Um, other than a little bit of fuzz, which is just part of the printing process. Look how adorable, look how deep the mouth goes. That's fascinating. And the ukulele looks amazing. And he just, he's just adorable. Look how cute he is. Ears, the ears are interesting because the outside's like the rough stuff, but the inside is very smooth. I think this is like his third print um, of this kind of a detail on his printer. So yeah, 3D printing, boy, if I had a 3D printer, um, this house would be full of Star Trek crap. <laughs> Fuller than it already is. 
um, because I've seen phasers and a lot of different things. So uh, my best friend Ryan made this for me and it's absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to find a place to put it. And then while I was at the house, they're cleaning out if you're looking for a house in the Waterford area, I'm going to uh, I'm going to post their listing. Um, they're they're wanting to buy another house and move out of the one they currently are in. So they're downsizing everything and getting rid of a bunch of stuff. Apparently, this is a cookbook that my buddy Clayton, who passed away a long time ago, gave Ryan. Dr. McCoy's Tennessee smoked baked beans, cup of haggis. There's a haggis recipe in here. Haggis. So yeah, I mean, a sheep stomach, a sheep's little stomach, beef suet. I mean, <laughs> they've got how to make haggis in here. It's all over the place. And then they've got lemonade and cherry limeade and watercress and other tea sandwiches. Um, it is all over the place and it is goofy. Oh, jambalaya, that'd be kind of fun. Um, bread pudding souffle. It is just all over the place, 19.99. Jumbo Romulan mollusks. Who doesn't want to make a mollusk in their own house? Um, Ferengi spore pie. Oh, mushrooms. Oh, hell no. Blah. Uh, vac clover soup. If there's not clover in this, I'm going to be very upset. Uh, clear chicken stock, watercrest, milk, yolk, butter. No, there's no, uh, there's no clover in that. That's really... Yigrish cream pie. Flour, water, sugar. Milk, egg yolk, sugar, butter, vanilla extract. So it's just vanilla pie. Oh, and there's chocolate frosting. Hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic and useless. Um, <laughs> I will say if I see Ethan Phillips at a uh, signing somewhere around the area, I may take this to him and ask him to give it a signature. Because uh, his name's on it, so he helped, helped... I mean, I don't know how much of that he helped with, but he helped uh, write the cookbook. So that's fascinating. Ah, what a, what a weekend. We had a good time. Um, went to see dad, brought him two dozen donuts from Krispy Kreme. He put them in containers and put the majority of them in the freezer so that he can take them out periodically and have one or two. So that's, and that's what he does, so. So we had a really nice time. Got to sit outside, outside in the, on top of the hill, listen to the airplanes pass by, and that's about it. It's pretty quiet out there. Not a lot of noise. We'll make this, um, we'll make this next week. And I'll put it, uh, I'll put it through the clever on uh, Tuesday. But that, uh, that's your video for this week. I'm sorry about that, but you know, I just needed to go spend time with dad because it was his birthday and decided to stop and see some friends while I was down there. So that was, that was a good time. And it was nice to get away and you know, hang out with my family. So I hope that you have been able to do that recently. It's gonna be an interesting summer. It's gonna be a warm summer. It was cold this past um, week in the evening, but now here in Ohio, we're gonna hit 90s uh, by Sunday, Monday. So, whew, it's gonna be, gonna be crazy. So the pool will be full of people and I will no, be nowhere near it. <laughs> I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great weekend. We will talk to you on Tuesday of next week. Get a cup of coffee and have a drink for me.